With ChatGPT Plus, you can access advanced data analytics, formerly known as Code Interpreter. This allows you to upload, analyze, and visualize almost any type of file. But the more I use it, the more I run into limitations of it, and it's getting quite frustrating. Then I found Open Interpreter, and this looks very promising. It is open source and it runs on your computer and collects no data. So this really allows me to work with sensitive data with my personal files, invoices, contracts, and stuff like that. It has full access to the internet, no limitations how long you can use it, and no limitations on the file size. Oh, and you can access GPT-4 using OpenAI API or use free code Llama. And there is way more, which I will get to. Just take a look what Tagman on X was able to do. He downloaded video from YouTube, extracted the necessary parts from 34 minutes video, did a transcription, translated to Japanese, converted this translation to subtitle format, and burned in subtitles, all in one place with open interpreter on your computer. I'm not a programmer, but if I figured how to do it, you can too. Before you can install Open Interpreter, you will need to download Python. You can ask ChatGPT how to do it and even use some plugins for web browsing and give a GitHub page link. And basically it will walk you through the whole setup. Once you get everything set up, all you need to do is use this function to install Open Interpreter. And then every time you want to launch it, you just type in Interpreter. That's it. But still, if you're intimidated working with your computer terminal, you can sign up on their waiting list for desktop application, which is coming as well. You see OpenAI service is hosted, closed source, and is heavily restricted. And there is a good reason for that. Code Interpreter has no internet access. It has a limited set of pre-installed Python packages. The maximum upload is 100 megabytes, and you get only 50 messages every three hours. And if your session expires, you lose all your files uploaded and also downloadable links. And as I said, there is a good reason for these restrictions. Just in two days, testing Open Interpreter with GPT-4, uh, I'm getting close to $20, which is almost the full price for a monthly use of ChatGPT+. So limitations are because of cost. It's just simple as that. Okay, so what I'm asking is find folder called Prof Synapse Tutorial. I want you to group files based on their type and create dedicated folders. The MP3 folder should be called Video Files. Rename all MP4 files so that it starts with PS Tutorial and after that include current file name. First of all, it presents us with a plan and with a code. All you have to do to say yes or no, but also there is this function that you can use, which means that you don't have to say yes every single time. Those decisions get automated. Oh, so it's looking for the path to this folder. And another thing, when you first time run this and maybe you don't have many libraries installed, Whatever you're going to ask, it will try to execute command and then it will say, hey, I don't have this library installed or I can't do uh, object recognition. And it will go and identify what type of library it needs and it's going to install it for you. And right now it says terminal wants to open Dropbox where this folder is located. So I give permission to that and ta-da! It says, great, we found the Professor Synapse tutorial folder. And you just saw it. It created a folder and moved files for me. Say yes again. And it created also PNG folder. This is the crazy part of me that AI, as we imagine how useful it is, but it can be useful at such a simple everyday mundane task. And I'm actually excited about this more than all the inflated promises. It says that it renamed all the files. Ta-da, all the files are renamed. This is fantastic. I have this data set that I downloaded from website Kegel and it is data scientist salaries. 
take this data set, which is CSV file, upload it, and I'm going to ask it to look into this file, analyze it, and suggest me how to visualize it in the best way possible. And off it goes. And while it's running, what you can also do is to drop links from the individual websites. You can scrape them, you can extract information, you can upload PDFs, research papers, you can summarize that. In their promo video, it also shows that you can send emails, which didn't work for me and here we go we have our first data analysis and visualization okay so something i'm testing live for the first time right now is to create a gif i gave some instructions so let's see if it actually gets to do it okay so this is not exactly what i asked but i think this is just preview uh, of how it would look Oh my god, it did that. Wait a second. It is Okay, so I asked for subscribe words rotating in 3D space with a matrix background. So I guess I got what I asked in reality because it is subscribe button in 3D space. Um so I guess subscribe. The reality is visiting more complex sites like, for example, LinkedIn or accessing your Google Drive is not going to be possible because those are made in Java. Code Llama, even though it's free, but a lot of people are struggling to get it to work, including myself. And really think about it. this is not a magical tool that's going to finish the work for you and do everything for you. Think about it as a new way to interact with your computer using AI and be mindful about the costs. If you want to use OpenAI API, maybe use 3.5 instead of 4, which is going to be way more cheaper, but also set hard limits on your usage. And some useful commands which you can explore is interactive chat. You can also have programmatic chat and you can also save and restore your chats so you don't lose your work. And you can also customize system message. So think about like custom instructions if I figure out how Professor Synapse works with this system message, I'm definitely making a video about it. But if you want to have similar agent-like experience in free ChatGPT or ChatGPT Plus for 20 bucks, you can watch this video here where I show how to turn ChatGPT into AutoGPT with one prompt.